Um, there we are. So now everybody, as y'all checking in on Facebook, y'all know what it is. Tell me your name and location in the comment section. Instagram, tell me your name and location in the comment section. We're going to get started in this live in 30 seconds. Whoever's here, y'all know what it is. Early's on time. On time is late. Late is forgotten. Don't be late. Don't be forgotten here because we're not going to mention your name. So as y'all coming in, hit that share button, Facebook. Hit the like button. There's a like button on Facebook. There's a, there's a comment button as well. So as y'all coming in, everybody knows what it is. We are getting started in one moment. Y'all see what the topic is. The topic here today is how to stop playing life scared. Uh, we got Jay from Houston, Texas, Carlos, Spain, Jonathan, Northeast Philly, Kingsley, Jordan. So, all right, so I'll just shout out the first people that came in with their name and locations. We're going to start in 10 seconds. I'm going to introduce myself in a moment. Then we're getting right into this material. Hope everybody's had a great day. Today is Thursday, May the 28th. This year is going by. So I hope everybody's you know, on the right path. You got a strategy. You got a plan. You're working. So those who don't know me, even if you do, I'm going to tell you again. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, former nine-year professional athlete, author of 26 books. I have spoken on stage at four TEDx events. I have, what else did I do? I already told you about the books. I've created over 15,000 pieces of content, 7,000 of them in the form of video. Y'all know the video site's called YouTube. 7,000 articles. They are anywhere you can read articles. Medium, Facebook, LinkedIn. DreAllDay.com has everything. DreAllDay.com is my website. Over 1,500 podcast episodes in the audio format. Y'all know audio is coming up. Every book that I've ever published is available in audio format. In case any of y'all prefer audio over reading. I got the audio. I got the video. I got the written content. So whatever way you like to consume content, I got it for you. And when they got virtual reality content and augmented reality I'm going to put all my content in that format as well. All of this that I do, though, is under this umbrella of this whole philosophy, this brand, this business that I'm the CEO and owner of called Work On Your Game. Work On Your Game is all about taking a pro-athlete mindset, the mindset necessary to be in the top 1% of what you do in the sports world and how you can apply that same mentality to your business, to your job, and to your everyday life. One of my 26 books is called Work On Your Game. It's a hardcover book. We just shipped a few of these out here today for anybody who has ordered. So if you want to know the whole philosophy, I took the best of the philosophy. Not, I, I mean, not everything I've ever said, but the best of the philosophy and condensed it down into these pages. 250 of them right here for this book. I'll tell you about this later on. But let me tell you who work on your game is for. Because I want to make sure anybody who's listening to me right now knows that I'm speaking directly to you. This philosophy, anything that I talk about in this philosophy, any framework that I share with you, I'm going to share with you one of them here today. You can see the topic. On Instagram is at the bottom of the screen. On Facebook is above the video. But this framework, this whole framework of work on your game, or any framework within this philosophy, rather, is for one of three different types of people. Type person, person type number one is an individual who feels like you need to step your skill level up. You know that you don't have as much game as you need to have, and you're looking to add to your skill set. You're looking to get your game better or step your game up or you know, develop more game. Person number two. It's a person who feels like you have game, but for whatever reason, you're not showing your game. You're not displaying your game when it matters. You're not showing it in the right way. You're not getting the right light and the right angles. You know how sometimes you take a picture and the lighting's not right and the angle's not right, and you know that the picture will look good if you could just get the right angle and the right light. That's where you are when it comes to your career or your business. You just need the right angle and the right light. You know the game is there, but it's just not showing the right way. Any of you who's a photographer knows what I'm talking about, or any of you who've ever gotten your photo taken know what I mean. Or, or any of you took a selfie. And number three, the third type of person who needs his work on your game philosophy is a person who feels like you have game, you feel like you are being shown, shown in the right light, but for whatever reason, nobody's noticing. The right people are not paying attention. Maybe you got some people paying attention, but they're not the right people. The people that you need to pay attention to what you're doing are not noticing, they're not paying attention, therefore you're not getting the opportunities that you want. So it's three types of people who need this whole work on your game philosophy. Number one, person who needs more game. Number two, the person who needs to step up their performance. And number three, the person who needs to get more recognition for their performance. So if you're one of those three people, you need to be listening to what I'm saying this day and every day. Follow my story. Follow every, anything where you see my name. Follow, subscribe, whatever you got to do. So YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, the stories. Now, what else is there? My email list. You can get on that at workonmygame.com. I got a lot of domain names, so just keep track of them. Write them down if you can't remember. But the topic here today is how to stop playing life scared. How can you stop being scared all through your life when you're out there performing, when you're out there uh, selling yourself, when you're putting yourself out there, when you're making new moves, when you're trying new things, when you feel like there's an opportunity for you to take advantage of, but for whatever reason, maybe sometimes you've hesitated, you're second guessing yourself. How can you stop playing life scared and start playing life on the offensive? How can you start playing the offensive version of life? Now, I thought of this subject because I remember years ago, I was reading this basketball magazine. This is back when 
we used to actually read magazines like they were sending to you in the mail, in your physical mailbox. This is before everything was on the internet. And there was this kid in there. He was like this 12-year-old kid. And he was supposed to be like this superstar basketball player coming up. I don't know, he didn't become a superstar, but he was good enough. But anyway, one of the things the kid said is that I learned, they asked him, how did you get so good at such a young age? You're 12 years old. You're a good basketball player. And he said, you can't play basketball scared. And I always thought about that. I said, no, he's right. You can't play basketball scared. If you're scared, you're not going to show all your game. And then... Any of you who read my first book, Buy a Game, that I put out uh, over 10 years ago, or about 10 years ago exactly, my, or you read my book, Work on Your Game. I talk about it in the first chapter of this book. When I was in eighth grade, the best player in my middle school, I asked him for some advice on basketball. How can I get better? Because I knew he was going to go start varsity for four years, which he did. I was going to a different high school. I didn't know if I was even going to make the team, which I barely did by senior year. But he gave me two pieces of advice. He said, number one, you got to buy a game, meaning you need to step your game up because you don't have a lot of skill. And he was right. And the number two thing he said, actually, that was the second thing. The first thing he said was you got to stop playing scared. You can't play ball scared. If you try to play basketball scared, you're not going to show all your skills. If you try to play life scared, you're not going to do everything that you're capable of doing. You're not going to take advantage of every opportunity you see. There are going to be times when you have something you want to say, but you won't say it. There'll be times when you want to raise your hand, but you won't raise it. There'll be times when you want to make a move, but you won't make it. You'll stay sitting on the porch and doing nothing simply because the fear is slowing you down. So the whole point of what we're going to talk about here today is how you can stop playing life scared and actually start playing more boldly, more authentically, with more audacity, with more confidence and just going after the things that you want. And what you will realize very quickly is that most of the things that you were afraid of or that you thought you were afraid of before are not even they're not even real things. They're just illusions, like Michael Jordan said in his Hall of Fame speech. So point number one, topic once again today is how to stop playing life scared. Point number one, fear leads to self-consciousness. Everybody here has heard of self-consciousness, right? I did a whole chapter in my book, Work On Your Game, talking about dealing with self-consciousness and com completely eliminating self-consciousness. This book has 12 chapters, this book here, 12 chapters, and I did a whole chapter on eliminating fear and self-consciousness because I see it as such a huge problem for so many people these days that is the very thing that is stopping a lot of people from being the best version of themselves. So what is self-consciousness? If we really dig into it, I mean, everybody's heard of it. Everyone has experienced it is when you're so focused on you. I'm going to break this down so you really understand what it is and how it hurts you. Self-consciousness is when you are so conscious of yourself, meaning you're thinking about yourself so much that you don't have time to notice the other people around you, meaning you can't give them your full focus, you can't give them your full attention, you're not giving them any energy because all your energy is focused on you, right? That's what self-consciousness is. You walk into a room and you feel like somebody's watching you or you don't want to look nervous or you want to make sure you don't trip up the stairs or you think you might look silly or you wonder who's talking about you, who might be laughing at you, who might be staring at you and all of a sudden all of your focus and all of your energy is all on you. You become a self-centered, self-focused and self-conscious individual. Here's the problem with self-consciousness. There are several of them. I'm going to tell you a couple of them. One problem with self-consciousness is this. Everybody here who's watching this, you know how to tie your shoes, right? And most of the time when you tie your shoes, you don't even have to think about it when you're doing it. And if you ever try to think about it, make yourself think about tying your shoes while you're tying your shoes, what will happen often is you'll mess up on something that you've done thousands, literally thousands of times in your life. And why is that? That's because there are some activities for us human beings that are better handled through our unconscious trains of thought than through our conscious train of thought. There are some things, if we think about it while we're doing it, we won't do it as well as when we don't think about it. So any of you who, if you drive a car, and you, if you know how to drive, you had a license for years, you've driven a car, you've been behind the wheel of a car for thousands of, you might have 10,000 hours of driving under your belt, or at least 10,000 minutes. You've done it a whole lot of times. And if you are thinking about the fact that you're driving, you're thinking about how you're holding the steering wheel, how you're pressing on the pedals and moving and things like that, you might end up messing up simply because you're thinking about it too much. Your conscious mind is getting in the way. Understand that our instincts, our subconscious thought patterns work a whole lot faster than our conscious thoughts. Our conscious thoughts are the things that we're thinking about what we're thinking about. When you're consciously thinking, it, it is very quick, but your unconscious thinking is even faster. So when you take your conscious thoughts and allow them to get in the way of where your unconscious is supposed to be. It's basically doing a job that it's not supposed to be doing. There's too many cooks in the kitchen. What happens is everything becomes awkward. Everything gets slowed down. You actually don't do things as smoothly or as seamlessly as you would if you didn't think about them at all. If any of you ever been in this situation in life, I'm sure everyone who's listening to me right now, where you started thinking consciously about something that you normally don't think about at all because you're feeling self-conscious, and then all of a sudden you're not doing that thing as well. 
you might be talking and you get self-conscious about what you're saying or how you look or how people may be evaluating you or what people might be thinking about you. And all of a sudden, you're not saying the right words. You're fumbling over your words. And you're not saying the right thing. You start to feel nervous. You start to feel awkward. Then the very things that you thought people might be thinking about you, now they're actually thinking about you because you didn't allow your unconscious mind to control that situation as it normally does. When I do a, a speaking engagement, or even when I'm speaking right here on this camera, I'm not consciously thinking about the words that I'm saying. I'm just letting it flow because I have the experience and I'm confident enough in what I'm doing and I'm not worried about, oh man, somebody might think I'm saying something dumb. Somebody might be judging me. Somebody might disagree with something that I'm saying. Listen, all those may be true, but I'm not concerned about them. We become self-conscious when we, when we become overly concerned about what other people might be thinking about us. That's what self-consciousness means. We're all concerned about what is she thinking about me? Oh, him over here, he's laughing. Is he laughing at me? This person just whispers something to the person next to him. Are they talking about me? What are they saying? Are they saying something negative? Is there something wrong with me? Or is there, I got a stain on my shirt? Is there something in my teeth? You're worried about what other people might be thinking about you. Well, let me give you a few things that will help you out with self-consciousness. Here's the first one. This is the most important thing you should remember about self-consciousness. All right? If you ever feel self-conscious ever again in your life, remember this very first point if you remember nothing else. Other people are not thinking about you as much as you think they are. Other people, I mean, think about yourself, actually. How, how much time per day do you spend thinking about yourself versus thinking about other people? 99% of your day, you're thinking about you. Even if you're, you have a thought about another person, you're only thinking about that person as that person or what they said or what they're doing relates back to you. The only reason that we even think about other people is so that we can think about how whatever that person is doing or saying or whatever relates to us. All right. We don't spend that much time thinking about other people. And here's the truth. Other people do not spend that much time thinking about you. You are not that significant to other people. So when you walk in a room and people are laughing or they're whispering or it looks like they're looking at you and you think they're talking about you, they're probably not. And even if they are, they're only talking about you as far as whatever you represent relates to them. They're not talking about you for you. They're talking about you for them. All right, so you might have on a pair of sneakers that they want. They might say, damn, I like those sneakers. I want me a pair. Or you might say something that makes them think about something that's happening in their life. And they're like, damn, what he just said, that's something that happened in my life. They're not really talking about you. They're talking about themselves. All, right, all you are are a canvas for them to notice themselves. All right, every human being, we are all narcissists on some level. Some more than others, but we all have some narcissism within us, never make the mistake of thinking that other people consider you more than they consider themselves because they don't. Because look, do you do it? Do you think about anybody else more than you think about yourself? Probably not. Unless we're talking about like your kids, maybe your kids. And that's probably even a stretch. We are thinking about ourselves most of the time. So when you feel self-conscious, you are wasting your time considering something that's probably not happening. Other people are not thinking about you. They are thinking about themselves because they are just as self-centered as you are. And when you're good at what you're doing, as I already said, thinking just gets in your way. If you're really good at driving and you had to think about driving, then you actually drive more, you're more clumsy when you drive. You know how to tie your shoes and you think about tying your shoes, then you mess up tying your shoes, even though you've done it a thousand times. How can you mess up tying your shoes? Because your conscious mind is getting in the way. If you're a good, smooth speaker and you know exactly what you want to say, but then you start thinking about what you're saying, and you get self-conscious about it, all of a sudden you start messing up your lines, even though you know them perfectly. Simply because you've been overthinking. You start overthinking. Any of you have been in a situation of overthinking, that is self-consciousness showing itself. You don't need to be self-conscious in life simply because, again, nobody cares. All right? The only person who's thinking about whatever you're doing is probably you. Point number two, the topic here today is how to stop playing life scared. So the first point I just explained to you, don't be self-conscious. Self-consciousness makes you feel fearful because you're focused on things that you don't need to be focused on. And your brain needs somewhere to send that energy. And all of a sudden, it can manifest itself in, in something like self-consciousness, which is a form of fear. Self-consciousness is a form of fear because you're thinking about what negative things other people might be thinking or saying or doing towards you. When most of the time, that is a complete, it, it's, a, it's a figment of your imagination. It's not actually happening. Nobody cares. Point number two, you got to develop skill and practice. Or you want to stop playing life scared, develop more game. As I told you, first type of person who comes to this whole work on your game philosophy is a person who believes they need more skills and they need more game. So the number two thing you can do is develop more game and practice more. When you develop skills and you practice, for example, as an athlete, 
The more you practice and develop skill, I'm talking about your individual skill and if you're on a team, you play a team sport, the more the team practices and the team feels sharp and your game is sharp, you know you're in shape, you know how to execute the plays, y'all know everything you're going to do. When you get in the game, you're not nervous. doesn't guarantee that you're going to win, but you're not nervous. You're not like, damn, we're unprepared. You're not worrying what the other team's going to do. You know exactly what your game plan is. You know exactly how you're going to execute. You have very little self consciousness about yourself. You know that you're good. You know that this right here is taken care of. Now all I got to do is go out there and perform and may the best team or the best woman or the best man win. But when your skills are sharp <clears throat> and you know your skills are sharp, you're not worried about what is going to happen, what the other guy or girl is going to do, how things are going to work out. You know you can just go out there and perform. You don't have fear in your way. So this is what working on your game, one thing that working on your game does for you is it lowers all the pressure and noise in your mind. It builds your confidence because you're actually doing the thing. I mean, you're more confident shooting a, a three-pointer in the game if you know you practice a thousand three-pointers that week leading up to the game rather than if you didn't practice at all, right? And if you had practiced a thousand three-pointers before the game, when you get the ball and you shoot it, you only have to think about it because you already done this a thousand times to the point that you could just let it go. It's on autopilot, right? Whereas opposed to the player who never practices, then you get the ball in the game your mind is going in, in hyperdrive thinking about everything because you don't practice. You don't have the experience. You don't have a muscle memory. So it's impossible for you to not think about it because you've never done it. So the more you practice something, the more your mind will take over and you'll go on autopilot. So even when you're not trying to, the more you do anything, the subconscious mind is designed to take over that task and it becomes what we know as a habit. Everybody knows what a habit is, right? Or even if you can't define it, you can't say it in words, everyone knows a habit are things that we do consistently, we do them unconsciously, we don't have to think about it, we do it over and over and over again to the point that most of your habits, you don't even recognize them as habits because they are so, your subconscious mind has so taken over that task that you do it without ever even thinking about it. So you probably have executed hundreds of your own personal habits just today without even thinking about the fact that you did them. And you're going to do it again tomorrow, and, you, and it won't even occur to you that you're doing it. It's the same thing with any skill that you want to develop. If you do it often enough through that repetition, eventually you have the ability to do it without ever having to think about it at all. Then you don't have to be self-conscious about it, because how can you be self-conscious about something that you don't even know you're doing it? See, if something is a strong enough habit, you do it without, it doesn't even, you can't possibly be conscious of it because you don't even notice is a habit. You just do it habitually. You're not thinking about it. So this is something that anyone has the ability to do, but you have to decide in what areas of life or what specific tasks are you going to build that repetition so that you have that muscle memory so that you don't need to be self-conscious. You can't do this for everything because you don't have enough time and you don't have enough physical bodies to do everything a whole bunch of times to develop so much muscle memory, but you got to choose which areas of life or which tasks specifically you want to get so good at, you don't have to worry about it. So for example, a basketball player might take all the skills in basketball, but they're not going to try to do the same thing as a, you know, in typing on a computer because they're not a typist, they're a basketball player. And a typist is going to focus on listening to stuff and dic have somebody dictating to them and writing it down and getting the words perfect. And they're not going to spend the same amount of time on a football field or in a swimming pool because that's not what they do professionally. So you got to decide what are the areas, the specific areas. These would be a finite number of things you're going to focus on to where you develop such high level muscle memory that you never have to think about it. It becomes habitual and it is impossible for you to be self-conscious, which means you are not triggering that fear that could come from within, which happens to a whole lot of people. When you're fully prepared, there's nothing to be afraid of. Point number three, today's topic for those who came in the middle of this is how to stop playing life scared. Have you ever felt like you were playing life uh, apprehensively or you were slowing yourself down or not taking as much action as you wanted to take? I'm telling you how to get over that. Point number three, we got four points here. Number three, understand that fear only happens when you're playing life on your heels. Meaning when you're playing life in timid mode, you're back here waiting for something to come and attack you. You're in defense mode. I would suggest, this is, my, this is the work on your game suggestion, that you start playing life on offense. Play life aggressively. Be the, per, be the initiator. Play life on your toes. If, you stand, if any of you who's standing up right now, if you put all your weight on your heels, you're leaning backwards. If you put all your weight on your toes, you're leaning forwards. I'm suggesting you put your weight on your toes, metaphorically speaking, or literally, and play life in attack mode. I talk about this in the basketball world for any of you who plays ball. If you're on defense, understand that you can be an attacker on defense the same way you attack on offense. How do you attack on offense? You go towards the defender or go around them or attack the basket or get to your spot to get your open shot or do whatever you're going to do, but you attack. 
you attack the defense. That's how you become a great offensive players are always attacking. So any of your, whoever your favorite scorer is in basketball, that player is always on the attack. Even when they don't have a ball, they're on the attack. They're looking for their ways. They're waiting for their opportunity so that they can go and attack the defense. Now, here's the thing. On the other side of the ball, the best defensive players in basketball, guess what they are? They are also on offense. And I don't mean offense with the ball, but they play defense offensively, meaning they attack on defense. The best defenders attack on defense. You think about, I'm trying to think who's a great defender in basketball. Somebody like Patrick Beverly on defense, that dude attacks on defense. He doesn't sit back and wait for you to do a move, and then he tries to stop you. No, he goes after you. That is attacking defense. Scottie Pippen. Some, most of you may not be old enough to remember watching Scottie Pippen when he played. Michael Jordan as well. Those guys attacked on defense. They didn't sit back and wait for you to do something, then try to react to it. They would attack you and force you into doing something that you didn't even want to do. That's what a great defensive player does, in, again, for example, in basketball. Some, some of you may have heard someone say that the best defense is a great offense. Well, the way that you can be, again, if we're talking just sports, you can be an offensive defender. By attacking the offensive player. Don't sit back and wait for them to do something. And then you react. You go after it. And it's the exact same thing in life. I'm just using sports as a metaphor here. But the same thing happens in life. A lot of people play life on defense. And this is how they become self-conscious. They're back on their heels. They're wondering what's going to happen to them. They're wondering what somebody else is going to say to them. They're wondering if an opportunity is going to come their way or not. And things are going to work out in their favor or not. And they just sit back and wait for life to happen to them. Here's the problem with waiting for life to happen to you is often nothing happens. If you wait for life to happen, usually you're going to be waiting for a long time. You ever see that man, that uh, like a meme is like a, a, meta, is a, a skeleton, of a, a human skeleton, and it's sitting there like this, just waiting for something to happen. And the whole story that they're giving you is that the whole time you were waiting for something to happen, your whole life passed by. People who make things happen in life are usually playing life on the offensive. I mean, think about the people that you know of or you look up to or you read about or you hear about or that you follow along on who are, they seem to always be doing something and making things happen. What are they doing? Every time you hear about them, they're doing something. They're moving. They're attacking. They're going after something. They're starting something. They're taking initiative. They are moving forward in life. Life is always moving. We know that the earth is actually rotating, right? The earth rotates on its axis and it rotates around the sun. The earth is always literally moving forward. If you are not moving forward at the exact same speed or faster, then that means that the world is moving ahead of you and you are getting left behind. I say this all the time. If you're trying to stay neutral in life and try to stay in the middle, then you're losing because the world is moving forward. So if you're standing still, you, buy, you lose by default. So you got to be moving just as fast if not faster than the world is moving. So look around in your industry or wherever you work, your niche, whatever, and see how fast things are moving and ask yourself, am I moving? Am I evolving? Am I growing as fast as things are moving, growing, and evolving? If the answer is no or you're not sure, then you are in a precarious position and you need to do some things to make change as quickly as possible because life will pass you by and it will be ruthless about it. Point number four, this is the last point today's topic is how to stop playing life scared. Any of you feel like you've been playing life back on your heels, I'm going to tell you how to fix it. You may be concerned about judgment from other people. I mean, we talked about this in the first point on self constant If you're concerned about being judged by other people, the truth is, as I already told you, they are, con they are concerned about judgment from you. So the people that you think are judging you and you think they're talking about you or laughing at you or they got something negative to say about you or they're getting ready to attack you. They have the exact same fears and concerns about what you might do to them or about what you might say about them or how you might feel about them. Every human being on some level may have these thoughts. Some people have them more than others. Most people have not uh, really examined these things. They haven't really figured it out. So you're in the right place at the right time hearing me talk about it. You can read about it also in my book, Work On Your Game. But the whole point is this. Human beings are human. All right? Everybody is human. So the same uh, weaknesses or fears or self-consciousness that you may feel at certain times or a lack of confidence that you may feel at certain times or the fact that you're questioning or second-guessing yourself that you may feel at times in life, every human being goes through those at some point on some level regarding some thing. Again, now some people have it happen to them more than others and some people have learned to deal with these things while others have never ever addressed them. They just run away from them. That's why they keep having the same problems over and over again. But every human being is human. When I play sports, the coaches will sometimes say something like, listen, the team we about to play against, they put on their pants one leg at a time just like you. They tie their shoes one shoe at a time just like you. They're human. They bleed the same way that you bleed. 
do not ever look at other people, even if it's a group of people, as if somehow they don't have the same weaknesses or apprehensions or uh, insecurities that you may feel that you have. Other people have them. Again, they have different ways of showing them. They have dealt with them at different levels. But every human being, 95% of us as humans, 99% of us, we are all exactly the same. Is that small 1% that makes us different in how we look and how we talk, think, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything else is pretty much equal. So do not ever you know, elevate another person above you simply because you think they don't have any weaknesses or flaws or problems because, I mean, we know on the Internet, everybody shows the best version of themselves, right? We see on the Internet, we see everybody else's highlight reel, while us personally, we see everything in our own lives. We see all our behind the scenes. Everybody else, we only see their highlight reels. Even when people are showing you behind the scenes, they're showing you the glamorous part of the behind the scenes. They're not showing you the parts that they don't want you to see. So every human being has these challenges. Never think that you're the only one. There are a bunch of people out there who have them. The fact is... You are not thinking about other people. They're not thinking about you. We are all preoccupied with ourselves. Never get to thinking that other people are plotting against you, scheming against you, talking about you. They're probably not. They're probably just thinking about themselves the same way you are always thinking about yourself. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to recap these points. And as soon as I get done doing that, I'm going to tell you how you can get both of these books right here for free. I paid for both of these books already. I will ship these books to you. I got a stack of packages that need to be shipped out tomorrow right here. And I'm going to tell you how you could be the next name on one of those packages that needs to get shipped out. Let me recap these points. The topic is how to stop playing life scared. So I just told you, number one, fear leads to self-consciousness. All your thoughts and energy are directed inward. When you know you are taken care of and you're good, your thinking actually gets in the way. You don't need to constantly think about something that you have down to muscle memory. So fear is the culprit of that. Number two. Develop skills and practice. The more you develop skill and practice, the less you need to think about what you're doing. It becomes habitual. It becomes muscle memory. You can do it without thinking about it. Number three, fear only happens when we play life on our heels. When things happen and we're waiting for something to happen so we can react to it, rather play life on offense. Play life on the attack. Point number four. Is that number four? Yeah, number four. You may be concerned that other people are judging you, but the truth is they're worried about you judging them. So the same fears and insecurities and self-doubt that you may have at times, other people have those too. Again, they have different ways of showing it, different ways of dealing with it. But everybody has it. Every human being, 99.9% .9 of us, we are exactly the same. There's only a small, percent of us, a small percentage of our makeups that make us different. So don't think that other people don't have these same challenges that you have. All that said, let me tell you about these two books right here, how you can get them both for free what they are, why you want them. This right here is called the mirror of motivation, the self-guide, the self-discipline. This is for the people listening to me right now who want to step out of the old version of you and step into a new version of you, change your energy, and thusly change your results. Because here's one thing I know for a fact. When you change your energy, you change who you're being and you change the way you approach life, the exact same actions that you were taking before will produce completely different results. So if you're the type of person who wants to keep getting the same results and the same uh, being unfulfilled and the same not getting to where you want to go, then there's nothing I can do for you. But if you want something different, you want to change your life, you want to step into a new version of you and get brand new results based on a brand new energy that you have, go to mirrorofmotivation.com. That's the title of the book. Just take out the the mirrorofmotivation.com. Tell me where to ship this book. The book is paid for. You take care of the shipping. Mirrormotivation.com so you can step into the new version of you and change your life from the inside out. This book right here is called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. This is written specifically for any player who wants to play professional basketball overseas, even if you've been overlooked, uh, underrated, nobody's ever given you a shot, and you feel like you had a talent to play pro ball. So if you're a player who, <coughs> excuse me, you only play basketball for fun. You don't want to play at the pro level. You don't want to put yourself in that position. Listen, this book is not for you. But if you want to play professional basketball overseas, you want to get paid to play ball, you want to travel the world, get stamps in your passport, and do something that 99.9% .9 of athletes in any sport never do, which is get paid to play your game, go to balloverseas.com. The book is already paid for. You take care of the shipping, and I will ship you this 237-page book that gives you the full blueprint of what you need to do to get started in a professional basketball career. There are players who play overseas right now who've been playing for 10 years, players who are new, players who play in the Euro League, players who play in the top leagues in Europe who have read this book. I know because I've spoken to these people personally. I'm not going to put their business out there, but I know them, all right, and they know me. So if you look up overseas basketball, you want to see me, you want to see my content, and you want to see people copying my content. So go to balloverseas.com and get this book, The Overseas Basketball Blueprint, balloverseas.com. The book's paid for. You take care of the shipping. Now, if anybody got a question, I don't know if we got any. I wasn't looking at the comments while I was talking. I will address them if there are any in the comment section. So if you got a question, go ahead and post it now before I get to the end of this comment list or the end of this, this entry list. 
and I will address it. E the Beast, what's good? Alex Avachka, what's going on? Boy Thang, what's going on? He said, you graduated? Congratulations on your graduation. Brandon said, too many cooks in the kitchen makes chaos, even though you think it will help. Yes, that's exactly true. You don't have too many, you don't have too many people trying to do a job of one person. That's, that's when things slow down. The same thing with your conscious and unconscious minds. So this book right here, I told you I'll tell you about this. This is my book, Work On Your Game, where I took my whole philosophy of my mindset, the things that I use in sports and that I use now as an entrepreneur in business, and how you can take these same, the same frameworks of this philosophy and you can apply it to what you do. So even if you're a school teacher, a maintenance man, you're an electrician, you're a photographer, you're a model, even if you don't play ball or you don't run a business, if you don't do the things that I do, the frameworks that I describe in this book can be applied to any area of life. This is not a basketball book. This is not an entrepreneurship book. Even though I talk about both in the book, that's because I'm telling you what I went through, but also how the frameworks apply to anyone because this is my skill. I think if you listen to this live that I just did, you understand that these frameworks can apply to anything that you do in life. So you can get this book. This is a 250 page hardcover book, workonyourgamebook.com. Workonyourgamebook.com. We also want to give you $1,200 in digital bonuses immediately when you order the book. While you wait for the book to come in the mail, you got the $1,200 in digital bonuses you get immediate access to right now. So workonyourgamebook.com. That's where you can get this book right here called Work On Your Game. I think I saw something come up in the comments. Somebody asked me about leagues that I played in different countries. I would suggest you read this book right here, Work On Your Game. And you can read this book right here, The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. You can also go to dreallday.com slash basketball where I wrote about experiences as well. One day I might write a, write a book about my whole basketball experiences, but it's not, on the, it's not on the ledger right now. But I may get around to it. Yeah, yo, Alex, what's going on? Gian Marco said, on defense, ready to attack. Well, be on offense. Offense is even better. You could, you could attack even better if you're on offense. Get the ball so you can score. So, again, mirrormotivation.com, self-guide, self-discipline. The book's paid for. You take care of the shipping, mirrormotivation.com. Matia and Ben over there on Facebook, appreciate it. Bogoverseas.com. This is where you get the overseas basketball blueprint. The book is already paid for. You take care of the shipping. I do these lives every single day, 5.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Facebook, the lives will be up if you want to watch it later. I do put them on YouTube as well. So if you want to see any of the lives that I've done this year, just go to my YouTube. Just look up Dre Baldwin. It's YouTube slash Dre UPT. Or just look up my name, Dre Baldwin. I'm the only one with that name. All my videos are up there. So this one will go up there. It's going to be a couple weeks before this comes out. Y'all know how it works. So that's YouTube, Facebook. I'm on all the platforms. So just whatever platform you prefer, just look me up. The only one I'm not active on is TikTok. It's the only one I don't post regularly. But everywhere else I post, my website, DreAllDay.com. I just told you where to get these books. That's that. I'll see you all tomorrow. Work on your game. Dre all day. We out.